Hello YouTube, this is Saeed Mirza. Today's talk is based on my book, Will You Not Reason, which can be downloaded for free at willyounotreason.com. This book is a concordance of God's arguments in the Quran and is intended for people who are interested to know what the Quran has to say about the existence of God, the last day, and our true purpose in life. This book also deconstructs the religion of Islam to show how alien this religion is to the Quran. I will be using the excellent translation of the Quran called The Quran, A Complete Revelation by Sam Gerns, which can be downloaded for free from Quranite.com. The title of today's talk is, Where is the Complete Shahada in the Quran? The Shahada is a declaration of faith and is the de facto requirement for entrance into the religion of Islam. It translates to, There is no God but God and Muhammad is the Messenger of God. However, this complete statement is not found in the Quran. It comes as no surprise that the Shahada is not in the Quran as the adherents of the religion of Islam do not follow the Quran. If you wish to challenge me on this statement, please ponder the following fact carefully. The Quran claims to be fully clear, complete, and fully detailed. And perfected are the words of thy Lord in truth and justice. There is none to change his words, and he is the hearing. The Noe, chapter 6, verse 115. And we have brought them a decree, which we have set out and detailed according to knowledge, as guidance and mercy for people who believe, chapter 7, verse 52. And when our clear proofs are recited to them, those who look not to the meeting with us say, Bring thou a recitation other than this, or change thou it, say thou. It is not for me to change it of my own accord. I will follow only what I am instructed. I fear if I should disobey my Lord, the punishment of a tremendous day. Chapter 10, verse 15. In light of the above verses, how is it possible that the Quran does not mention this fundamental requirement in full? It is not possible. Therefore, we must reasonably conclude that the Shahada is not a requirement to submit to God. I must impress upon the listener that the Islamic religion and Islam which is a state of submission to God, are two entirely different concepts. The former is membership in an exclusive group complete with specific rituals, dogma, and regulations. The latter is a personal choice to believe in God and serve Him alone. The religion of Islam has done a spectacular job of building a house of cards on core Quranic concepts. This house of cards comes crashing down when these concepts are deliberated carefully using the Quran alone. God bears witness that there is no God save He, as do the angels and those possessed of knowledge, upholding equity. There is no God save He, the mighty, the wise. Chapter 3, verse 18. Let us ponder on the above verse. God Himself testifies that there is no God but Him. Those possessed of knowledge testify to this as well. This then is the true Shahada to which all believers must testify if they are to testify to anything. The Quran never commands that a specific declaration be made in public or a specific formula be recited if one chooses to submit to God. Abraham's submission to God is recorded in the Quran. And who is averse to the creed of Ibrahim save he who deceives himself? And we chose him in the life of this world, and in the hereafter he is among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit thou, he said, I submit to the Lord of all mankind. Chapter 2, verses 130 and 131. The sorcerers during Musa's time submitted to God and their submission to God is also recorded in the Quran. And the sorcerers fell in submission. They said, We believe in the Lord of all mankind, the Lord of Musa and Harun. Chapter 7, verses 122-122. The Queen of Sheba's submission to God is also recorded in the Quran. It was said to her, Enter thou thy palace. And when she saw it, she thought it a body of water and uncovered her legs. He said, It is a palace paved with glass. She said, My Lord, I have wronged my soul, and I submit with Suleiman to God, the Lord of all mankind. Chapter 27, verse 44. The claim that a specific formula needs to be recited for a person to be saved or to enter into a religion is patently false. Adherents of the Islamic religion claim that a person must testify to a specific statement, which is not found in the Quran in order to enter the religion of Islam. If a person does not testify to the Shahada, then they are not considered Muslims. Such a remarkable stance is unsubstantiated by the Quran. Indeed, it is a false invention among many such inventions that are part and parcel of the religion of Islam today. 
God requires a submission to be evidenced in action. Those in possession of the law, which includes current day adherents of the Islamic religion, differ regarding the commandments in God's scripture due to envy and jealousy. The Shahada of the Islamic religion treats Muhammad as a special messenger. You would be hard pressed to find an adherent of the religion of Islam, that is, those who call themselves Muslims, saying that the Shahada is there is no God but God and Jesus is the messenger of God. Yet, if they really followed the Quran, they would have no qualms about testifying to this fact. We are specifically told that the believers do not make a distinction between any of God's messengers. We must hear and obey these imperatives completely and sincerely if we claim to follow the Quran. The messenger believes in what is sent down to him from his Lord, as do the believers. Each believes in God and his angels and his laws and his messengers. We make no distinction between any of his messengers. And they say, We hear and we obey. Thy forgiveness, our Lord, is what we seek, and to thee is the journey's end. Chapter 2, verse 285. Perhaps the biggest problem with the Shahada in the Islamic religion is that of attaching the name of a man alongside the name of God the Almighty. This is something which all monotheists must be careful of. Sanctifying and revering a man is the first step towards deifying him. In this regard, the Shahada is antithetical to strict Quranic imperatives to not set up any partners with God. Of course, adherents of the religion of Islam will never agree to let go of the invented Shahada, as the Quran states. And when God alone is remembered, the hearts of those who believe not in the hereafter recoil. And when those besides him are remembered, then they rejoice. Chapter 39, verse 45. This discussion on such a fundamental requirement of the religion of Islam is sufficient to prove its tenuous connection with the Quran. The fact of the matter is that the religion of Islam is based on sources other than the Quran. I hope this video motivates you to look further into the Quran and sincerely ask God for guidance.